Welcome back for another PyTorch video. In this video, we're gonna code the original Google Net or Inception Net from scratch. I'm gonna try to do my best to go through it step by step. Uh, and let's start with some brief overview of the paper. The title of the paper is Going Deeper with Convolution and the Network Architecture Set State of the Art uh, Results on the ImageNet Data Set 2014. We are going to skip a lot of the paper, but I'm going to link in the description of the video if you want to read it. Uh, in this video, we're only interested in the architecture implementation uh, details. One thing uh, interesting, though, is that they, they cite a meme for the motivation of the network. Um, which, uh, so the meme is we need to go deeper, and it's also why it's called Inception Net uh, from the movie Inception. So the architectural details, uh, I've highlighted some of the most important things. But really the idea behind the inception net was that, so how do we choose the kernel size? Is 3x3 a good kernel size? Is 5x5 a good kernel size? Uh, we really don't know. So the idea was, well, let's try all of them or many of them and the, the network can by itself choose which is important. Or maybe they're all important and they can uh, find some interesting patterns using uh, multiple kernel sizes. Um, we're gonna see a little bit more of that in the next uh, slide. But w one big so they mentioned here one big problem with the above modules is that at least in the naive form is that even a modest number of five by five convolution can be prohibitively expensive on top of a convolutional layer with a large number of filters. So essentially, doing a five by five conv on a lot of filters is very very expensive. So here is the idea, like they have a previous layer and then they just try all of them. They do a one by one conv, uh, three by three conv, five by five conv, and they also do a three by three max pooling. And then they do take all of those results, they concatenate them and that's the next layer. So what they mentioned in the above slide is that doing these five by five convs can be very expensive. So rather than doing the five by five conv uh, on the previous layer on all of those filters, what they're going to do is they're going to have a 1x1 one one conv before the 3x3 three three conv. And the only thing that the 1x1 one one convolution is going to do is it's going to reduce the number of filters. So let's say that we have 200 filters coming in. The 1x1 one one conv might change it so that it's 50 filters. So 200 gets reduced to 50. And then the 3x3 three three conv is only working on those 50 fi filters. And similarly for the 1x1 one one conv before the 5x5 five five conv. Yeah, so they mentioned here that is one by one convolution are used to compute reductions before the expensive three by three and five by five convolutions. Here's the inception at architecture. The input is 224 by 224 by three. And in the beginning, they just do a some normal convolutional layers combined with some max pooling before the inception blocks. And um, they have a patch size or a kernel size of seven by seven in the first conv and a stride of 2, and the output size is 112, and 64 filters. Um, they don't. I don't believe they mentioned the, the padding that they use, but from those values you can infer the padding uh, to be 3. And similarly for the next uh, conv layer, it's going to be a padding of 1. Uh, really what I want to focus on is these inception blocks. So the inception blocks do a so, uh, like all of those one by one, three by three, five by five, perform a same convolution, meaning the input is 28 by 28. After they leave the inception block, it's still 28 by 28, but the number of filters have changed. So in, from to the inception 3A, it's 192, that's input, number of filters, and 256 output. Um, and here in those columns here, they mention the output from each of those um, each of those sub uh, conv layers in that inception block. So the one by one output is 64 filters and then the, the three by three reduce is the one by one conv before the three by three. So the number of filters, um, so here we can see that it's a reduction because it's 192 filters input but the output from the three by three, I mean the one by one um, before the three by three is 96. And then the output from the 3x3 three three is 128. Um, the 1x1 one one before the 5x5 five five is 16. 
Uh, and so you can see here that the number of filters for the 5x5 is very, very few because the 5x5 is so computationally expensive. And then the 5x5 output is 32. And the pool proj is the 1x1 one one after the max pooling. Yeah, so I think so the number of filters uh, that output is the the one by one uh, filters plus the three by three filters plus the five by five filters plus the pool project or the um, yeah sorry the one by one after the max pooling uh, which is thirty two so if we add those up we're gonna get two fifty six and then they just use a bunch of those inception blocks. Um, combined with some max pooling in between, some inception blocks, max pool, inception blocks, average pool, uh, dropout, linear, and that's the output. Yeah, so they have a nice image here of the paper, uh, or the architecture rather. One thing, so everything, all of these is like what we covered, uh, it's just the image for, like in the graphical form. Uh, one thing that we didn't mention is that they use something uh, like they use auxiliary classifi classifiers on the side. So they use one classifier here, one classifier here, and then one classifier at the end. Uh, this is only during training that they use those. And the, the idea was that they improve the regularization of the network. And, and uh, so b by making a classifier here, we're trying to make sure that the layers up to this point actually do something useful. Um, and uh, this is like one motivation was to reduce re uh, the re uh, reduce the ability of the network to overfit. I'm not going to do these auxiliary classifiers, although if you want to see how that is implemented, that's not uh, very much different than what we're going to do. And it's going to be a link to my GitHub where I've implemented uh, using this auxiliary function as well. But I do think that that's a, a good, uh, so that's an overview of the network. If you want to read some more details, check it out. Now we're gonna go back to the implementation. Hopefully you're still with me at this point. This can be a difficult architecture, uh, but stick with it and uh, we're gonna get through it step by step. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna create a class for a com block. Because remember, the inception block uses multiple different uh, one by one, three by three, etc. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, create a com block that we can reuse uh, for all of those uh, branches in the inception block. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna get back to the Google Net network and we're gonna use those com blocks and those inception blocks. So just an overview. What we start with is just defining com block. Inherit from the NN module and create the init. And so what we're going to have as input here is in channels, out channels. And also to make it general, we're going to use keyword arguments. So for example, here you would insert the kernel size, uh, etc. cetera, um, maybe padding the stride. What we can do in Python is that we can just use double star quarks uh, for keyword arguments. And so, yeah, if you don't know about this, you can check out another video, but really it's just uh, keyword arguments that we can send into the uh, com block that can be arbitrarily many and that we can reuse in, uh, in the com2d, for example, that we're going to use. So first, what we need to do is to call the super uh, on the com block. And then what we're going to use in this com block is just a relu. Yeah, so and then dot relu, we're going to use conv, conv2d with those in channels, uh, out channels, and then we're going to just leave those quarks here. So for example, the quarks will be, we're going to input uh, like kernel size is uh, one by one or maybe three by three or five by five. We're not sure. So we're just going to leave it as it is uh, with those quarks that sent into the init. And then we're going to do a batch norm. I, uh, so batch norm is not in the paper, um, mostly because it wasn't invented at that time. We're going to include it because it's most definitely going to uh, improve the performance. 
bathroom 2d with our channels and then in the forward we're just gonna we're just gonna return um, so self dot relu of self dot batch norm of self dot conv of x. So just a standard uh, convolutionary block. We're gonna have a conv. After the conv, we're gonna have batch norm, and then we're gonna have a relu. Yeah. So now we're ready to go for the inception block. So inception block. Now why we did the com block before is because remember the inception block uses multiple com blocks with different kernels so yeah we're gonna do the same thing yeah define init self in channels now we're gonna have a lot of arguments to send into the inception block here we need to have first uh the the out from the one by one um, so we have a one by one that, that was um, in the inception block. Then we have a reduction before to the three by three. And then we have a three by three. Then we have a reduction to the five by five. And then we have a five by five. And then we're going to have at the end, we're going to have out from the one by one pool. Um, that's just what we're going to call it. So this is from the one by one. This is before the three by three the reduction uh, this is the out from the three by three so remember all of these are the number of filters this is the reduction before the five by five this is the output filters from the five by five and this is the out um, after the max pool uh yeah the max pooling so we're going to call super of inception block dot init now we're going to have four branches right the first um, branch is just a one by one so we can do self dot branch one to be com block and now we utilize the, the class that we created here with in channels and out one by one and the kernel size is going to be one by one uh, instead of using so the tuple one by one let's just write kernel size one like this then what we're going to do is that we're going to the next branch and remember the next branch was the three by three we're going to use n dot sequential to combine uh two different blocks because remember we need first a block for the reduction so that we have in channels here we have the reduction to the three by three and a kernel size of one then for the next one we're going to have com block with the reduction from the three uh from the previous block and then out three by three we're gonna have a kernel size three here and also we're gonna use a padding of one and how we find the padding here yeah so i guess the stride is also one we can write that like this um yeah so how you get the padding here is that you know that the stride is one the kernel is three and we know that it's going to be a same convolution we can just use uh standard formula i think i've talked about in a previous video to get a padding of one in this case then the branch three i say the same and dot sequential to combine blocks we're gonna have in channels we're gonna have the reduction before the five by five same again we're gonna use a kernel size of one yeah so i'm not being very so the padding here is zero and the stride is uh, one uh, that's default so we don't have to input it to PyTorch so com the next com block is going to be the reduction for the 5x5 five five, and then the out from the 5x5 five five, and then kernel size is going to be 5 and again we can infer the padding to be 2 uh, since we have a stride of 1 um, which we don't have to write either because that's default in PyTorch so we can remove this as well just to make it more compact and then we need one more branch and the the last branch is the max pooling first so we're going to use nn dot max pool 2d with the kernel size of three stride of one yeah we don't have to input that um or actually i'm not sure for the max pool we can input it just to make sure padding of one and then we're going to have the com block with the in channels uh, the out from the one by one 
and kernel size of one. Right. Now remember what we're gonna do in the forward is we need to con concatenate all of those filters, right? We didn't change the input size. So the input size, for example, let's say it's 28 by 28. The output size from each of these branches is still going to be 28 by 28, but the number of filters have changed. So what we need to do is that we need to concatenate all of those filters. So what we can do, we can return uh, torch.concatenate um, and a list of self.branch1 of x, self.branch2 of x, yeah, just all of those branches of x. And yeah, so the dimension of the concatenation is going to be in the first dimension. Since we have, yeah, so we have number of images that we send in, uh, times uh, filters, times, let's say 28 by 28. Then what we want to do is that we want to concatenate all of those branches, the number of filters, which is, so this is the uh, zeroth dimension, this is the fir first, second, and third. So that's why we use the first dimension here. Yeah, and that's, that's it from the inception block. So remember, all really comes from the com block that we defined in the beginning. The inception block uses the com block. Now we're gonna you, we're gonna create the entire Google Net or Inception network, which uses the inception blocks as well as the com blocks. So let's call it class uh, Google Net and module self and the number of classes is all that we're gonna input. Let's say a thousand. And then super Google net self called in it. Now, uh, so I think I'm gonna give uh, put the picture here so that we we know all the values. But from the beginning, we're gonna use just a a com block with in channels to be three. Um, yeah, I guess we can set we can also send in in channels here. And we can just set it to standard three. And out channels is going to be 64. Kernel size is going to be. Let's write all explicit from the, for this first comp. So we're going to do seven by seven. Uh, stride of two by two. Uh, padding of three by three. Uh, yeah. Then we want to have a max pool. The kernel size is three, stride is two, and padding is one. Then we're going to do another conv. So remember, these are all just the standard uh, convs in the beginning before we use the inception blocks. So com block, uh, yeah. And the com block takes in channels from the beginning, so we're just going to write more compactly. 64, and the out channel is going to be 192. Kernel size is going to be 3, stride is going to be 1, and the padding is going to be 1. Then we're going to have another max pool with the same kernel size 3, stride 2, padding 1. And now after those initial uh, normal conv layers, we're going to start the um, the inception blocks. So we can just copy this just to remember the order. So we can write in this order like this. And we're going to call self.inception 3a. That's what they, they call it in the paper. We're going to call inception block. And all of these values are just from the paper, just uh, copied from the columns of that specific in row inception 3a. We're going to have in channels as under 92, right? Because that's the output from COM2 here. Then we're going to have the out from the 1x1 one one to 64. Uh, the the 1x1 one one before the 3x3 three three is going to be 96. 128 out from the 3x3. Three three. Uh, yeah, I think you get it. So I'm just going to write them out. Um, yeah, so again, these are all just from the that table that we looked at in the paper. Then inception 3b, uh, we're going to, again, call the inception block. We're going to do 256. Um, that's in channels, 
128, 128, 192, 32, 96, and 64. Then we're going to have a max pool again. With a kernel size of 3, stride of 2, padding 1. Then again, we're going to have a lot of inception blocks. So, inception 4a, inception block. I'm going to write all these values again. Um, 192, 96, like, like this. Then, we're just going to copy uh, this multiple bunch of times. For C, for C, for D, for E. This. And yeah, I, actually, I'm just going to copy these. Um, yeah, it's not really nothing interesting here. Then we're going to have another max pool with a kernel size of 3, stride again of 2, padding of 1. Then we're going to have some more inception blocks. Uh, yeah, inception block, and then we're going to have another inception block. Yes, yeah, so really you can see like how complex or how large this network is since like we're calling the inception block multiple times, which uses different, uh, like several com blocks. Um, and we're using the inception blocks a lot of times. So you can really see how the network is going to grow uh, very quickly. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to copy in those values. Then what we want to have is an average pool with a kernel size of 7 and a stride of 1. Then we're going to have a dropout. Uh, and the P is equal to 0 0.4. The drop rate is 0 0.4. Um, we didn't mention this from looking at the paper, but uh, they wrote it somewhere in the paper. And then we're going to have, lastly, a linear layer. And the input is going to be 1024 and 1000. Yeah, so now we've defined all of our inception blocks and all the com blocks now we need to call the forward on all of those forward yeah so now essentially all we're going to do is just x self.com one of x um x is self.max pool one of x just go through each of those uh, that we've defined Three A of X, pool. Yeah, and then we're gonna do all of those inception blocks. So let's just copy this, and we're gonna have four A, four B, four C, four D, four E. And then we're going to have the max pool 4 of x. And again, call the inception 5a, 5b of x. Then the uh, average pool, uh, and then drop out and the fully connected. And then we're going to return X. Whew, okay, so hopefully if uh, nothing goes wrong now, uh, we can check if the dimensions of the network make sense. So we can just do if name equals main. And we can do X is torch.random. Let's say we have, because this is a very large network, so, not, so that it doesn't take too much time. Let's just say we have three images. Um, all of them are going to be 3 in channels uh, to 24 to 24. Then we're going to just call the Google Net. Uh, let's say our model equals Google Net. And then we want to do print model of x dot shape. Yeah, so let's hope. Damn, all right, so let's see. 
Uh, I might pause the video if this takes too long. Later, I now found the error. Uh, there are actually two errors. So first, uh, in the inception block, in the last branch, we don't want to out one by one. We want to out one by one uh, for the pooling because we used the max pool before. So that's the out one by one pool. And then also we need to do, uh, after we take the average pooling, we need to reshape X uh, so that it's it can uh, perform the fully uh, connected. So we do X dot shape of zero and then just the rest, uh, concatenate all the rest dimensions. And now if we run it, we get three images and all of them have a thousand, which is exactly what we want. Um, yeah, so that's how you code the Google Net from scratch. Uh, I hope you were able to follow the video. If you have any questions, uh, then leave them in the comment section below. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and I uh, hope to see you in the next one.